This is a knitting podcast, and I am Queen Deborah. I'm Queen Emily. And it is, let's see, December 6th, 2017. Yay. We are in the Christmas season. We're being all festive here. Mm. I'm, I'm dressed all festive. I know. You've got your sweater. I was going to call it an ugly Christmas sweater, but it's just awesome. It's too pretty to be ugly. It's so fun. <laughs> it's so, so we've fun. had some fun times. Uh, you can find us on Ravelry in the groups tab under Meanwhile at the Castle. And we have a website, uh, www.meanwhileatthecastle.com. Our contact information was posted at the very beginning um, for Instagram, where we have links to all other things. Yep. And in the down bar below, we also have um, our information. So that's the place Perfect. to go. And we are sisters. I was going to say every once in a while, we should probably mention that every few episodes because some people don't. We don't, I don't know, always necessarily look like sisters. What do you think? But, yeah, do we look alike? I think once you know us more. Even I don't see it. Every once in a while I when we smile, I see it. And that's yeah, it. just not very much. But anyway, and we are coming to you from Salt Lake City. So it's been cold. We got a tiny bit of snow that it melted immediately. When it was snowing, I turned off all the lights, put the Christmas tree, Aww. lit some candles, turned on Christmas music, and told everybody, be still. <laughs> be still. I feel because like I we need had to snow go around. for like half a second. <laughs> well, it like kind of came and went throughout the whole day, but it was just like sparse and didn't stay yet. Yeah. You know that song, Still, Still, Still? I think I should sing that to my children every day. <laughs> still, still, still. Please be still. <laughs> I've been having that kind of morning too, so anyway. <laughs> So, so it's been our goal to kind of just podcast more frequently, especially dur during the month of December. I don't know that we'll stay this frequent. Sorry, I just threw things on the floor. Anyway, stay this frequent when it's, you know, after Christmas. But for now, we wanted to, to do that. And so... Have some Christmas fun. festive fun. Yes, absolutely. I've been watching Vlogmas. People's Vlogmas. I almost jumped on the Vlogmas bandwagon. I, I was... I was this close and then decided that I would be too stressed out about yeah. if I missed it. Not, anyway, right. so I didn't. And so That's enjoy, the same I enjoy everybody me. else. <laughs> same for me. So we both went somewhere fun this last week. We went to the Festival of Trees in Sandy, Utah. And it is a fundraiser for Primary Children's Hospital. And it's something that I have gone to with my children and my mother for the last... I don't know, eight to ten years, mm -hmm. but I haven't been in years. I think the last time I went was fifteen years ago. Wow, that's yeah. Was it at the? It was, um, was it downtown. Yeah, it was at the Salt Palace downtown, and and um, Aria, who's almost nineteen, I think was three and was in the little ballet class, and they did a performance, oh, and so that's fun. why we went. And then before that, it was when I was a teenager performing, that we would go and perform there. Yeah, so. I hadn't been as a child or a teen, but then I've taken my girls and it was lots of fun and we saw lots of gorgeous trees. We checked out the gingerbread creations. Which was oh, my so, goodness. they were amazing. Wow, some really cool Especially Barton Cottage. I think that was my favorite one. <gasps> 
Yeah, that was so You cool. can go look at both of our Instagram. I think we both posted I didn't, some things. I oh, didn't, but there's okay. some video at the beginning. I'm yeah. putting some here, and we'll have some at the end mm -hmm. um, of some of the things that we saw. But one that was really neat, that people usually donate. Everything there is donated. Right. And it's usually in honor of somebody who has died. Um, or is fighting cancer or yeah. something like that. And so while I was there, I saw a tree that was in honor of somebody that was that died this year in my neighborhood. There was a young man who was hit. Um, he was in a car accident and he died. And um, it was just really sweet to see that tree in, in mm -hmm. his honor. And so I called cool. my friend sent, and chatted with her for a minute mm -hmm. because that was special for her. Uh, it was his her son who passed away. Mm -hmm. So we had a great time. We ate treats. The kids did eat treats. <laughs> Not enough treats, actually. <laughs> I plan to make up for that. <laughs> to... Normally, I am baking like crazy this time of year yeah. because I love to, and I like to make gourmet, delicious desserts. You do. She... Oh my gosh. I love to make all of the beautiful, tasty things. If you haven't figured but... out yet, Deborah does everything. <laughs> yeah. So. Not necessarily. I I don't run. Neither do I. <laughs> if we run. That's our joke. If we run, you, you should run too. <laughs> yes, that means something bad is chasing us. <laughs> the only time I run is when I'm taking my dog for a walk and she is just going crazy and I'm like, fine, I'll let you just go crazy and we run and sprint and then I get home and she's like, oh good, now I'm ready to go and I die. And I'm just like, <laughs> So it's really entertaining to watch. I see people driving by and they're like, what is happening with that lady? Cause there's actually a story behind this too. <laughs> Can I tell the story? Okay. So we were at a heroic youth event one time and, um, Deborah was in charge of it that day mm -hmm. and we were practicing a song that I had written and, um, or had helped to write. And a friend of ours in Dover and he goes, is there anything you don't do? And I said, I don't run. And he kind of chuckled. And then later on, he, Deborah was teaching all the teenage girls a song or a dance. And she's down there dancing with them. And of course, she was really good. And, and he goes, is there anything she doesn't do? And I said, she doesn't run either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway. We're not runners. So, anyways. But I haven't been baking. No what? baking. Ever since going gluten-free. It just doesn't have the same... Yeah, I mean, I can make really fantastic things. It just seems like so much more of a hassle. Yeah. So I just don't. I still gain the same amount of weight. <laughs> so I don't know what's up with that. So you're that. still eating tasty things. <laughs> I am. But I have great aspirations to make delicious things this season. So. Well, last okay. week we made Grandma Child's recipe for pepper nuts. Um, they're a Danish cookie, Pfeffernus, although the recipe that grandma made was not the same as traditional Pfeffernus. Um, they're, the traditional Pfeffernus are very strong with anise. And it also has, depending on yeah. which version you make, has a lot of pepper in it. And Hence the she didn't like pepper either of those things. And, um, but it's basically just really tiny, little, crunchy molasses and ginger Ice. and cinnamon and clove cookies. Okay, that's yes. it. I'm making it. We should, well, at least I'll make them. I'll record. You know what? I can post that. the, I can, I can post the um, recipe, grandma's recipe. Yeah, let's do that. I'll post that. I'll post that on the website. Um, they're so tasty. She did it they're just so really quick. She was just yeah. about getting it done because she made mass quantities and they're tiny so yeah they're little like, bits and she would store them in little christmas tins and either that them or to like neighbors and um the ice cream buckets and the, yes yeah, ice the cream. plastic <laughs> like oh they're like a gallon ice cream yeah bucket. like five quart ice Something cream like that. buckets that you know she would save those and and just fill them yeah and she had five that. kids and so she would make a big bucket of those for each of the families and yep. Anyway, they're really fun, tasty. Fun traditions. I've got to make them. We've talked about it for the last week. I still haven't made them. Well, we made so many that it filled our cookie jar to overflowing plus a platter. And then we gave some away and we snacked on them a lot while we were doing puzzles. Mm -hmm. We did some, got some Christmas puzzles out and we're doing puzzles and 
and uh, eating cookies. <laughs> it's a good combination. But they're little teeny ones, so it's almost like popcorn. Like you just pop one in your mouth, and then you it's pop like another one in your mouth. It's like those mini candy bars where I especially think it takes the ones something... that come already unwrapped. Yes. Those are. If, the... I think it's supposed to be something like five of those equal a regular size candy yeah, bar. Whatever. But when you eat mini ones, it's kind of like they don't they don't count. They don't until you've eaten no. about twenty, and then you're like. Oh my word, that's a lot yeah. of sugar. I did that yeah. one time when I had to go in to the doctor. Um, I was pregnant and they do a glucose test and I didn't think about it, but I <laughs> ate a king size candy bar that morning. <laughs> I mean, those things are huge. I ate a Kit Kat, a king size Kit Kat that morning. And I went in and then the doctor called me as I was- Your Glucose is very elevated. Home. They're like, I think you need to go into the hospital. <laughs> They were talking to me about about my blood sugar level was just off the charts, and I was like, "Oh, I'm feeling okay." And, and then I remembered, "Oh yeah, I ate that candy bar. That was a bad idea to eat yeah. that much all at once." When you're pregnant, you do weird things. So I always do weird things. <laughs> well, I, I like that it's an excuse. Can I say I I was pregnant before in my life? So we still do weird things. <laughs> all right, let's okay. move on to knitting. Good idea. Good plan. Okay, you're in the middle of a row there? No, nope, I'm done. Okay, I'm in, why don't you show? Me. Are we doing finished objects? Finished objects. I only have one. Objects. This was inspired by Deborah last week. Ooh. You showed your totally tubular hat by Wendy Geckner. You said it right. I Good said job. it right, and she was so happy that I said it right that she sent me a copy of the pattern. It was so you sweet. Finished it. And Good I knit job. it. I changed the ribbing. So this is you the didn't hat. Do the broken rib. I didn't do the broken rib. I just did a plain one by one rib. Um, because I thought it's just more my husband. So um I knit this and it's so squishy. It's a two layered hat, it's reversible, so it looks like this crazy thing. And yes, I need it out of two colors that are almost identical. Gray and beige. Which is perfect for my husband because <laughs> that's pretty much all he wears. So that was kind of, it's a little bit kind of making fun of him just a tiny bit. Which Why is that? Not in a bad way. Like he will appreciate that. I'm like, I knit it out of gray and gray. <laughs> if you only saw this color, you would kind of think it was like, I don't know. It's kind of a tannish gray. Yeah. It's grayish. And then there's this gray. Anyway. It's a very interesting construction. I loved it. When you told me it was a provisional cast on, I assumed that it was a cast on here. Mm -hmm. And then you knit one and then you knit the other and then like grafted them together mm -hmm. or something. But it's anyway, far more simple than that. It's e way easy. Yeah. So I haven't blocked it yet. I just finished it last night right before he walked in the door. And so I haven't been able to show it to him, but he is going to love this. I had him try on the hat that I showed last week that I knit for my son who's in Ukraine. And he tried it on and he didn't like that it had an off-center cable. Richard would never wear an off-center cable. And actually after he said that, I thought maybe my son won't either. He'll probably turn it and wear it down the middle. But anyway, um, he was like, oh, I like this. He kept commenting on how he, he liked it. He and liked? He liked the knit hat. Oh, he didn't like the down. cable, but he liked it. He the loved the hat. He loved the feel of it and he liked how it fit him. And I was like, that's good, because this is basically the exact same size, only it's extra warm and squishy. I knit this out of, let me find my, my yarn information, two colors of Barocco Vintage. I really like that one. I do too, and I thought it's good because it's, I need it to be machine washable. Yeah. My goal is for him to be able to wear it to work. Because it'll get But grease. it will get dirty. It'll... He's a mechanic. He's a very clean mechanic, but he's still a mechanic. Yeah. Um, and so it will get dirty. It needs to be able to be it's washed really and I can machine wash it. Um, so the first color is... Does it say on there? No, they're just numbers. So the kind of grayish, this brownish color is color 5106 in Barocco Vintage. Mm -hmm. That's that one. Here, I'll oh, be, okay. I'm being Vanna White. Thank Just you. Just a minute. You're much prettier and better at this. And then the second one is color 5105. So exactly. They're one number apart. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, but I'm really excited. I think it's for the first time ever, I found a knitting project that is so Suited perfect for, your husband. for him. 
and I really like working with this yarn. It's funny because when it's like this, it doesn't feel that soft. <laughs> But when it's like this, it feels so soft. Yeah, I've knit a few things with it now, and I decided that it's more of a go-to yarn for yeah, it's great for people that are going to need something that's a little bit easier to care. Yeah. But it's also really soft, so it's really nice. I and I'm, I want to knit him a sweater. Okay. Uh, now that I've done this out of this yarn, I really want to knit a sweater. How long did you do this part? I did it five and a half inches because I know Richard won't want any slouch and um, he probably will cuff the front. What he d tends to do is he pulls it down over his ears and his neck and then just flip the top over. Okay. So that's exactly what he did last night when he put that hat that I knit for Ethan uh, on. Uh huh. And so, um, yeah, so I did it five and a half inches here. Actually, you know what? I did five and a half inches shish. Five and a half inches ish. I did 35 rows. Oh, okay. And then I did 15 rows of the ribbing for each one of those so that it was also easy for me to remember the numbers and match it exactly mm -hmm. on the second one. And then just the crown decreases. Anyway, great pattern. Fantastic pattern. I highly recommend it. And I'm making more of these because yeah. I my kids were all wanting one. I know. After I like, made one for my husband, yeah, I need one. I It's so oh. warm. And the thing is it looks it looks really big to me just holding it up. But it, it's just because of the two layers. It's so nice. So Wendy, yeah. great job. I love it. Thank you so much for gifting me that pattern. And the construction, Here the it way is. she's got it put Smart together. Smart construction. Is really good. Yeah. Just love it. Love it, love it. Fantastic. And it's quick knit, obviously. Yes, very quick. <laughs> I knit it in two days. So I started it day before yesterday, finished it yesterday. So very nice. Great. Okay, Which is nice because that's like two hats, you know? Yeah. Two Christmas hats in present. two days. Check. Yes, I love that. <laughs> <sighs> Check. All right. I finished a pair of socks. First of all, I have it in a bag that I made last year. So cute. I like the little progress keeper uh, that I made with clay that I have just hanging on this side. The A little, little penguin. penguin. And the yarn that I am using is Hedgehog Fibers in the Zephyr colorway. And I have 51 grams left. So I could knit another pair. Nice. That is the best. This is a pair for my daughter. And she picked both yarns and I did a slip stitch heel and the toe I did a little bit different than I typically do because my daughter told me exactly what she wanted. First of all, she wants more color for the toe. So I started down a little bit lower and she wanted very short, uh, sharp decreases with a wide toe on the top. Um, and I thought, well, that looks really weird. But when she wears it, she says it's absolutely perfect nice. for her. So I kind of like that because I don't have to think about, did I just knit a plain row or did I do the decreases? I don't yeah. have to look at it to see. I just decrease until I had 16, no, 14 stitches left and then Kitchener to it closed. So I knit something like three quarters of an inch, did decreases to 14 stitches and closed it up. Here's the pretty sock. I really like really this pretty. yarn. I like the whole thing. It's just adorable. And I don't know what the contrast is. It's just... It's a mystery skein. It's a mystery one from my stash. So that is pair 14 for the year. That is awesome. I have one more pair that I might get done in time. So I might have... might do 15 possibly this year with my goal being 12. So that was good. Good. And nice. next time we need to talk about knitting goals, Emily. Oh, yes. My knitting goals. I have no idea what they are yet. That is something to think about. I don't have any more finished objects. That's because all it's just been a week. finished objects. I know. One week. Look at I us. mean, it took us a month, so we're making up for it. I guess, yeah. So it's a week. We're doing good. I can tell you, I have a little bit of an update on my fancy cardi by my fancy cardigan by Hoagie Locatelli. I finished the ribbing at the bottom and bound off about a quarter of it and mm -hmm. my ribbing was just flipping up and I, 
I'm not gonna put up with that. Not after all that work, it has to be right. So I pulled out all the ribbing and I turned to Instagram for help and um, got some advice from the oh so knowledgeable I Rock Knits. Um, I can't remember what her name is, but she's a knitting instructor and she gave me a formula. She says, if you're having that problem, decrease one stitch for every eight and then you don't have to change needle sizes. So basically what I did is because I was working in one by one rib is on my eighth. So I would knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, then purl two together. And that's what I did all the way across the bottom. And so now I'm just working on the ribbing again. Um, so wait, how does that help it? Not that, flip? Because what's happening and the reason that it's flipping up is that the, your ribbing naturally creates more fabric than your regular knitting does mm -hmm. because of the going back and forth. There's like a little bit more, we don't knit at the same tension usually when we're creating ribbing. And so there's more fabric in that. And so it flips up. It wants, it curves okay. because it's just bigger. Okay. Than the rest of your knitting. And so you decrease. That's why a lot of times for ribbing, it's two needle sizes smaller. Mm -hmm. That pattern didn't call for re for going to a smaller needle. So I hadn't done that. And um, I could have still gone to a smaller needle, but I really loved her idea. And so I wanted to try it out. Plus it means less stitches. Yeah. No brainer. So anyway, um, yeah. So we're trying that out and seeing how that okay. is going to work. Play it's all good. I will let you know. <laughs> but yeah, that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> Especially after all of that ribbing, because you know ribbing. Yeah, I mean, can it's sometimes be a one chore. by one rib when you've got 450 plus ne stitches on the needles mm -hmm. is a lot. And it wasn't <laughs> like it was a long. It was only like an inch of ribbing. But it you know, still it was a lot. lot. Of it was a lot. So that's okay. Yeah, it's better to have it be it's something be you'll right. be happy with. Yeah, than... but th but because I want to be working on Christmas projects, I just I got it to the fixed point. I did the decreasing, um, and now it's just gonna be set aside for a little bit. I really want to wear that sweater, but I want to knit for Christmas, so I'll get to it. That's fine. All okay, right, we're gonna move on to works in progress. Works in progress. Oh, here's a funny story. While we were at um, Festival of Trees. They have some little booths that oh, you that can buy, buy gifts at and stuff. And Emily's been collecting pins. And so I thought, ooh, I found some pins there. I'm going to buy one for her and surprise her with it when she walks out of the, out of the little shop. So she walked out of the shop and she says, guess what, Deborah? Guess what I found? <laughs> she found a pin. So we now have the same pin. <laughs> I know, my Festival bag's a little trace. bit crazy. <laughs> so, so look at all my pins, they're so fun. Yeah, well, they know that the road to hell is paved with good intentions. So. The road to hell is paved <laughs> with enamel pins, apparently. <laughs> I think we need a better saying than that when it comes to enamel pins. <laughs> I agree with you. All right. My favorite, though, I mean, I love my small world pin. Look at how cute that is. But I love this little llama. He's my favorite. And you know what? I can't even brag that these pins are really from anywhere cool. They're, like, from craft stores and stuff, most of them. Not all of them, but... Well, I think that... I just love them. They're fun. One, there's sentiment to the pins. And, and then two, there two, there's just, just cute. Just cute. <laughs> yes. All right. Okay. Hey, I am working on... Oh, no, I lost my spot. Oh, Let's man. Let's see. Just a second. Okay. It's the worst. I'm working on Molly Hat by Aaron Ruth. I may copy you on that one, too. <laughs> it's kind of got a waffle weave kind of texture. It makes me think of... You know thermal fabric mm -hmm. type of fabric um, which is essentially kind of a broken rib it's just when when you do that do the knit when curl, curl. Row. so I am this far on it oh, that's lovely um, I really like this cable that's it's lovely. just it looks so cozy. it's just simple cables are just they look so Good. Fancy, they do, and they're just in general, especially like this one, just not that hard to do. So if you are afraid of doing it, come on, give it a try. Cabling, just a basic cable, is really quite simple and has a big impact. So very lovely. Um, I'm using a 
an acrylic yarn so that it can be thrown in the washer and in the dryer and it is lion brand yarn uh heartland yarns let's see and it's in the isle royale or royal color way i don't know that you can really see that we'll see uh maybe but it'll be in the show notes very um, nice and i've got I don't have that much more to do before it's time to do the decreases. And this is a Christmas knit. And after this one, that's the end of my Christmas knitting. Really? Mm-hmm. Wow. I'm not doing a ton. Well, I say I'm not doing a ton, but I did something like six or seven hats and a pair of socks or two, so. That's amazing. But you've been working on it for a while. I'm yeah. just getting started. I so started early kind of on pathetic. because I didn't want to have the same issue as last year. Where I had to give the gift with the needle still attached and the yarn still attached, and then you took know it what? back. No, that was still that was fun. So. And I took it back and said, "Okay, now let me finish." <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to make sure that the project was complete. Oh man! All right. Well, my my first work in progress are these socks, and it's all it's kind of a half finished object because. I finished one. I don't have it on a blocker. But there it is. This is in Knit Picks Felici in the fanciful colorway. I think it's so cute. It's so, so cute. I think I have to knit some shorties. I think I'm going to have enough for shorties mm -hmm. left that I'm going to make some for myself out of this because I just love it. Anyway, these are for my daughter. So I've got one done. And I've got this much done on my second sock. So just cruising along on these. The hardest part about these is sock knitting is usually my on-the-go knitting. But my daughter's been with me usually when mm -hmm. I'm on the go. So I've found it a little bit of a challenge to get some time to work on these. Um, but like this morning, you know what? She doesn't get up that early. So... <laughs> I just need to get up in the morning and then my problem is solved. I did that this morning. You remember so. last year though when I kept doing that? I'm like, okay, I'll just get up. I got up like an hour earlier every morning. And yeah. every morning that I did that, my daughter who I was knitting for got up an hour. But that's because you were knitting for your did. youngest. Yeah. If you were knitting for your teenagers. Then I'd have all day It long. would be totally different. <laughs> Actually, that's not true because they are up at yeah. 5.50. They're up way before I am. Well, this one is for my teenage daughter, so... She gets these, and they're cute. They are cute. They're really cute. I kind of don't want to give them. It's okay. They're hers. I'm not going to be selfish. I'm knitting these, like I said, out of the um, Knit Picks Felici Fanciful, and then the heel and the toe, and it's just, again, a slip stitch, simple slip stitch heel, and the toe are in Piratenvola. This is the yarn. Let me find the label. Somewhere in here, there it is. That's the label right there. In color 550. So, that's what we've got. That's a good yarn to use for the yeah. toes and the heels. 75% wool, 25% polyamide. And it's um, more it's toothy. A, it's a, yeah, it's a toothier, a little bit heartier. So that will- Woolier yarn. Good. So it's it'll be nice and strong. Which is good because she's, like I said before, she's my one who goes through the toes of her socks. So those are on the way. All right. How about you? Okay. This one's maybe not so exciting to everybody else, but I really, I haven't been knitting much on my um, squares or pinwheel squares lately because I've been working on Christmas things. So I started a new one kind of in these jewel tones. And that's pretty. now that I've got started on this again, <laughs> that's all I want to knit on. <laughs> I know, that's awful, isn't it? So I'll add, wait, no, no, that's not right. I plan things out. I know that this is still scrappy, but it's planned scrappiness here. So this will be the next one that I add in that will kind of be like this one so it will alternate and then I have a blue that will go nice. here. The problem is I just realized I don't have, I thought I did, I thought I had a fourth kind of berry color 
to go in this one. I, I have started and I this don't. one. Would that be the right color? I don't know, maybe. So it may sit there unfinished, which means I won't be able to work on anything because I only have one set of needles, unless I switch it to something else to hold it. But anyways, that's all the excitement there. These are just minis that I have exchanged from friends online, and I don't know what pretty much any of them are. That's care. okay. That's so fun. That's the one by Mina Phillip, though, the pattern, right? Yep. Yeah. Uh, scrappy pinwheel blanket. And I... I'm having a lot of fun with this. And after I do this one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, then yes, then I'll have enough to seam together one row. Nice. <laughs> then I'll just have how many more to go? 8,000. <laughs> Close, yes, pretty much. That's okay, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> I know, that's what I have to keep telling myself with blankets. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. It doesn't really okay. matter because before when I would sew, sewing is one of those instant gratifications. Well, yeah. sometimes. And that's why I didn't have the patience to knit because it is not an instant gratification mm -hmm. kind of thing. And so having long-term projects that like socks that might take me weeks to make or months to make in some cases is just unbelievable to me. Now that's fine, but a blanket thinking, oh, I have something that's unfinished for a year or two or what, that, or would, five. that would stress <laughs> me out. But now I'm kind of like, oh, I'll get to it when I get to it. I have another blanket the fusion blanket that's on my list to get to this next year to start working on again. I cast on this blanket on Christmas Day, two Christmases. So not last Christmas, but the Christmas before. So things take time. That's okay. Yeah, but let's but, see. Let's see yours. So I've added these. I'm just showing you the ones that I've added for my, um, my advent because I don't know when the last time was I showed this to you. So... Um, I've added these four and I've left the progress keepers on there because you have to see Kimberly, who is my scrap, my swap partner is just spoiling me rotten. Every single one of these days, there's been a mini, some kind of a goodie, chocolate or herbal tea and a matching progress keeper. Now I feel like a schmuck for not being more generous not that she would think that she's too sweet but anyway so this is my day one and look at that the purples and pinks and then this little cupcake pink and icing with little blue and purple sparkles on it and then this cute one and then this one with the purple to match the purple and then like the it's like a little gingerbread something or other and it's got a little Christmas stocking with a little red bead so I've got two more days to add into that. I've got yesterday's, which was this mini with this cute, oh my gosh, that's so cute. Fun, like kind of springy colors. And then today I opened it. I've got this pink and purple. And then that, and it, the little heart says, made with love on it. Isn't that cute? So, yeah, I'm with you. This is what I want to work on is my blanket. But I'm being good. One a day at the most. And I had one day where I couldn't do it, so now I'm behind. A, <laughs> Not no that stress. that's okay. No, no stress. stress. No, not a stress thing. It's just that I want to work on it. I'll anyway, show you my... And my blanket's getting kind of big. You know, it's how many squares is it? It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 12 squares and then this direction it was 11 I think two four six yeah this direction it was 11 and so that's why I'm adding this so it'll be 12 by 12 mm -hmm. when I'm done with this row how big is that 144 it's still like lap size at most I mean like I yeah I put it mm -hmm. over me um and it yeah it's not it's not big enough to snuggle up under but it is enough to throw over your legs while you're sitting there knitting so anyway i'm enjoying it i i like the weight of it i do too that's what's nice and i'm and knitting great i'm knitting this i'm following what danny from little, little bobbins did and i'm knitting it center out so that in the end all of my seams kind of make these v's that mm -hmm. all match up in the center I mean, all my decrease lines. Does that make sense? I'm at my decrease lines. Makes sense to me, but. I'm glad it makes sense to somebody. 
Like we've discussed, I speak Emily and you speak yes, Deborah. Yes, exactly. So. <laughs> All right. I have to show from uh, my swap partner. I haven't knit with mine yet because I have so plans cute. for different things, but I need to wait till I have a collection of them. So this is what I've got so far. She sent a little pin cushion today. That's adorable. And on the first day, okay, look at this. This is the cutest little thing. I didn't have an actual chain, so it's just on a elastic cording right now. It's a little Aww. pine cone and it says, symbol of eternal life. It's a wish box charm. And it opens up and it has three <gasps> oh. little tiny pine cones in it. And they represent uh, love, joy, and faith. How cute is that? That's so sweet. Love it. Is it magnetic? Does it close it is, magnetically? It is. It's magnetic. Nice. So I love I it. That was really cute. I'd be less likely to break <laughs> if I have anything that opens. Like I had a little one of those like watch pendants. I just click it, close it, click it, close it, click it. Oh. I'm such a visitor, <laughs> fidgeter until I broke it. Anyway. Yeah. Sorry. So I have plans. I'm going to be doing, um, some of these will go in my blanket as I find what it matches with. And then, um, some I'm going to make some scrappy socks, but planned scrappy. Cause planned you know scrappy. I uh, Kay Jones on Bakery Bears, she just did a pair of socks. They were like rainbow socks mm -hmm. where the, the cuff and from the heel down to the toe was all in a white. And so I was thinking I would use this for that and then she used minis and did some striping of like rainbow colors but I thought I'd just put just in, in the feet just in the legs oh, so just, the, in the, just leg. the leg only so she did cuff in the white uh -huh. and then uh, scrappy you know yarns down the leg oh and that's then right from the heel and the foot on she did white so oh, that's a funny I thought idea. that you know I'll pull out some of the what a great idea colors that would look good together and and do something like that so. Have you seen, now I can't remember the name of it, there's a sweater pattern that just came out and it's got, it's like the sock sweater or the sock sleeve sweater or something. It's a cardigan and then the sleeve, or maybe it was a pullover. See, what am I even talking about? The sleeves look like scrappy socks. I have not They're just like that. all stripey and I would totally knit scrappy to sleeves. I, I thought... Whatever it is, I just want to knit a sweater with scrappy sleeves. <laughs> I love this idea. <laughs> but we also learned how you love the idea, but don't love knitting scrappy uh, socks. It's weaving in. I love the look of scrappy things. Love it. Like with my blanket, it's not a big deal because I finish a square, I weave in the ends. Every single time I've woven in the ends. Uh -huh. Unless like if I'm going to sit and knit three, three squares at a time or something, I might wait... You know what? Usually even then I don't. Usually I just weave them in right then. Good but time. with socks, you kind of can't do that. You need to, you need to, you can't just weave it in when you've added one color. You have to wait so, you have so a little that bit you've more got room. a fabric to weave it into, yeah. you know? So anyway, that's the only thing that holds me back. I've got some, some more planned sock knitting because I've decided that after I did all the other things, the Christmas knitting, that I'm going to knit myself several pair of socks. Nice. So I just talked about one. Okay, from Get Your Yarn Wishes Granted, I got this so gorgeous pretty. skein of sparkly yarn with this adorable uh. mat matryoshka doll. Is that how you say that? Mm -hmm. I think so. Yeah. I had a lesson on that this week on how to say it. <laughs> I've always just said it matryoshka, but you know, what do I know? Not um, really very but much. I've, uh, it was, I, I'm not good at it. Anyways, but this is from Crystal from Vintage Fairy LLC. And she sent me one of those Progress Keepers yeah. too, which and I this love. one is so pretty. And I just downloaded a pattern that came out today from Lara Smoot Designs. She's spinning Lara on Instagram. And I just forgot the name of it. It's not it just the pug one, out. is it? No, it wasn't it's the pug one. So cute. That one is really cute, but I know <laughs> like, I would not I, be able to do that one. I'm like, now. I can't see that with this one. Anyway, so, sorry. So I'm going to knit myself. I think that might That's be pretty. my Christmas sock knitting for me. I Those think are, I'll do that. that that'll a be a gorgeous. good pairing of pattern and yarn. Gorgeous color. Gorgeous, and then gorgeous color. This one. Oh, it's crinkly. I should have taken it out earlier. I'm sorry. But this skein of yarn I've been holding on to 
for the last few months waiting for the perfect time to knit. Okay, sorry people. Okay, I love this Beautiful. one. This one is Knit Song Yarns and the colorway, she didn't write it on here. Is Telegraph that? Avenue. Telegraph Avenue. Oh, it is so pretty. It is so I'm gonna knit myself a pair pretty. from this one. Oh my gosh, that's gorgeous. I love it. It's so pretty. Love it, love it. I, I didn't do anything with it because I thought, well, I'm gonna make a shawl or something that you'll see, not on my feet. But I really want socks. I really want socks and this is so cute. So And you know what? You wear socks every day. I do. You don't necessarily wear a shawl every day. Yep. Although I wear one shawl every day. This one right Oh here. yeah, you're gonna show that one. I will in a minute. So that's what I'll be casting on. I have three pairs of socks that's going to be next. That's awesome. So you're going to make your scrappy socks with your scrappy socks flexovers with here. this and the advent minis. This one with the pattern from Lara Smoot Designs. Yep. And I don't know the pattern. It'll probably just be vanilla, probably. So you can show that design. yarn off as much as yeah, possible. Exactly. That's so pretty. I love it. So I have to show a yarn off too. Okay, let's see. So get your yarn wishes granted. My wish was for Spectrum Fibers because I ogle her yarn all the time. Gorgeous. But I haven't ever actually owned my own Spectrum Fibers yarn. I bought one yarn. once and I need I think, more. wasn't it like the very first yarn you ever bought? It was the second yarn. Oh, you bought Chili one, Knits. I think. Which I don't remember which one was first. Anyways. Either way, they were both gorgeous. Yeah. Okay, so she said, what color we would you like? She granted it to me and I said, you pick, because I can't pick. There's too many yeah. <laughs> gorgeous choices. So I got a brand new one. And I just saw her post this today on her Instagram. This is called Party in a Nebula. <laughs> I love it. So that is much. really, really fun. Oh my word. Okay, and here's my thing. I have been absolutely addicted to Star Trek lately. Specifically Star Trek The Next Generation. I watch it every day while I'm doing my daily knitting. And, um, like, it's kind of ridiculous, but as you're showing me all these socks you want to knit, I was, like, picturing knitting them while watching Star Trek. Yes, that sounds like That's fun. really pathetic, actually. No, it's not. <laughs> I've been watching Doctor Who for the last... Oh, my gosh. But know, Spectrum Fiber, and it's Party in a Nebula. Okay, I have to knit this while watching Star Trek. Yeah, you do. Um, I'm feeling the same way as you were. I think I... I the last couple very special skeins of yarn... I've had, I keep thinking the same thing, like, oh, I should knit them into a shawl. I have a lot of shawls, though. I'm thinking I need cowls. I oh. think I need to make some cowls. And I've said this before, yeah. but I still haven't done it. Mostly just because I already have other projects going and um, then Christmas stuff. I and I want to finish those up. But I definitely have to knit some cowls. And so I think this will either be socks or a cowl. But, oh, I love it. It's... Um, 75 merino and 25% nylon. And I just, oh, I love it. Bryony is a brilliant color magician because she just everything, nails everything it. Everything. Every skein is perfect. I've ever seen her post. I'm just drooling over. Exactly. If I lived in Brighton, this would be really <laughs> bad because I would buy it all. <laughs> By oh. the way, I just have to show the fundamental difference in our personalities. Show your little tin again. Okay. This is what Deborah does. She got cute little yarns, so she balls them all up and she puts them in a little tin. Here's my <laughs> basket of mess. Okay. This is the difference between the two of us. Fundamentally. I mean, I love my basket I have of mess. A it's got goodies in it. Perfecting personality. It doesn't mean perfectionist, but a perfecting. I have an idea, creative, explosive personality. <laughs> but I'm also creative and, and oh, random, yes. but I typically am mostly a perfecting and mm -hmm. want things orderly and neat and I, yeah, I don't live in chaos well. No. I don't handle that well at all. And I like organized chaos, compartmentalized chaos. That's, yes. that's the best way to describe me. So creative chaos, but in its compartment, in its place. Because I don't like just chaos that takes over. So yeah. I have a container. I know what goes in there. I know exactly what's in here. But it's all just like whoop in there. So anyway. <laughs> yeah, we always do that with our purses where we yes. look at our bags 
and you see a big difference. Mine are always structured and mm -hmm. I kind of file things in mm -hmm. my bag so I can always see everything. And if it gets to be crazy, and I, just, I mean, I get really angry. Yes, her purse is oh, actually like you know. a square. It's like a box with handles. Yeah. The cutest box yeah. of handles you'll ever see. And then you like yours to be squishy and kind of floppy. And I like mine floppy. to be a bucket with pockets so you can oh. compartmentalize your chaos. That almost gives me a heart attack. Now, every the interesting thing is in my bag, I have little pouches. So I still know where yeah, everything yeah. is. Like I've got this little pouch, like a zipper pouch for all my pens and things. And so, you mm -hmm. know, anyway, and lots of pockets. But I don't want to have to like, like too much structure just makes me feel so confined. So Yeah, it makes you feel confined. And it makes me feel like it's out of control, like. Yeah. Just stuff floating around in the bag. All these bags <laughs> floating around in the bag. It's just like, so it's funny how both of us yep. are so different, but we also are so alike. Yes. In our creative, random, it, it, like there still is randomness. There's yeah. order to my randomness. Yes. <laughs> There's purpose in mine. Yeah. So, <laughs> I love anyways, it. okay. That's great. So okay, we both have some fun, a fun package that, that arrived this week. Yesterday. Yesterday? Day before that. yesterday, I think. Yeah. One of the funnest things, by the way, is that if somebody sends something to one of us, they almost always include a little something for the other. Yeah. You know, and that's really, really so sweet. People are so thoughtful. It I mean, so thoughtful. but this week we had, I had a message and I think you had a message from a really sweet woman that just trusted us with some of her her feelings and her thoughts and that was really meaningful to me to know that somebody trusted us with that. Mm -hmm. And so that's what is great about, we always talk about this again and again and again. We're probably always going to, so I'm What's not gonna so feel bad about it. What's so great about this, <laughs> but about not just the knitting community, but I always felt the online was so superficial, but I have found some really meaningful connections with a lot of you. So thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you for reaching out. Thank you for being such wonderful, sweet people. We just really love you and appreciate Absolutely. appreciate you so much. So anyway, somebody, somebody, somebody. Courtney, she's Cheap Mormon Girl Knits on Instagram. Which is just the best name. I know, I love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah, she sent me this, which I thought was really sweet. I'm gonna show you. I have sewn, I don't know, 150 or more little Cottage Notions pouches. I just had an update and those sold out, but I still don't have my own. So she decided that I needed to have my own and she made one for me. And she made a Christmas a one. Christmas and as a jingle bell. So that was in my, I put it right away in my Christmas bag. Sorry, I just pulled everything out of there. <laughs> So I've got my stuff in here. Thank you. There's this Christmas Christmas tree print in there. That's so fun. And this bell actually is a little progress keeper, but I like it on there because it's jingly That's whenever so I use it. <laughs> so that was so sweet. I didn't notice this. I just yeah. saw that. I did. I was talking to you about that before we started podcasting. I thought you were seeing the print inside. How no. cute is that? The Christmas trees. <laughs> They're so, so cute with she the sent embroidery another package for Emily. She did. So she she sent me a little note that said she had noticed that I had I'd been talking about the angels on my Christmas tree and she thought I have the perfect fabric. So she sent me this drawstring bag and she sent a nice big one for me to store all my scraps in because I was saying I didn't have a good place to store my scraps. Yeah, I store them kind of everywhere. It's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> so, what a great place for them to be. My favorite thing about her note was that she said, <laughs> the angels on the bag may be a little bit more scantily clad than the angels on your tree. <laughs> but it's just because they're like little cherubs. I think they're great. <laughs> they're so fun. And then she sent this little zipper pouch also with the Jingle Bell Progress Keeper on it. And it has a different angel on the front and back and on the inside. You won't be able to see it probably, but on both of the inside panels as well. Just so cute. I love it. So sweet. That was such a fun surprise. Happy it mail is. days. Lovely, lovely, lovely. All right. 
it's time for us to have a pattern spotlight. A pattern spotlight. I feel like we need like theme music or something for that. I don't know if I have any good theme music. I realize. Maybe disco. <laughs> I don't think that would quite work. I realized last time we podcast, I didn't talk about my new shawl pattern that will be coming out next week. Um, I am so excited about it. I, I have shown this before, I think, but this is called my Good Cheer Shawl. It's gigantic. I will post some pictures, or Deborah, <laughs> let's be honest, Deborah's gonna put the pictures in. Um, so here, if you can just get an idea of how huge this thing is. Oh, and it's cold in here. It is so. the softest, squishiest, yummiest thing. So here is the pattern, or here is the shawl. This is a triangular shawl knit in Aran Weight yarn. I've knit it from Malabrigo Worsted, which is an Aran Weight. It is very, it's very, bag? huh? Do you need this bag? <laughs> you can wear it when I'm done. It's very simple um, pattern. It's so fun. It's got this simple lace and garter stripes, more lace, garter stripes with an I-cord bind off that gives it a really nice, polished, smooth finish. Um, it is the warmest, coziest, yes, it is. softest thing. Cause I'm I was sure. saying before that you don't wear shawls every day, except for that shawl gets worn every day. It is the cozy and keep you warm. I'm always talking about what I want in a shawl is essentially a blanket. Yeah. That's, um, okay for you to wear out of the house. <laughs> right. As opposed to like the teenage girls you see walking around their pajamas wrapped up in their blankets. I'm like what? I don't know if that's just a local thing here. I think but... that's a local, <laughs> slow local thing of some of the like, girls do you around not here. Own a coat <laughs> or <laughs> pants. <laughs> In Utah, I'm just gonna say, people don't ever actually switch from shorts and flip flops to pants and shoes until usually somewhere in January. I mean, that's true. You'll see people in shorts. Still. Well, you'll still see it all winter long. The, my favorite is the mailman that would come to my house. He had shorts on, and then he had on like these jogger leggings, and then he had wool socks that went up to his knees, and another pair of socks, and then his winter boots, and this huge coat, and I thought, put, put on, on some, some pants. pants! What? <laughs> what is the deal with that? Just put on pants. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> like, By the way, that should be the audio clip. If we had an audio clip that we were ever going to have of our podcast, it would be, put on some pants. <laughs> anyway, the Good Cheer Shawl will be available on December 16th on Ravelry, and I'm really excited about it. I love it. How many skeins or how many? It's four it skeins of worsted weight, so plan about 840 yards. Um, it doesn't take quite 840, but depending on your gauge, um, you know, I would, I would definitely say four skeins. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, but yeah, plan on an Aran weight. Of course you can me mess with, with a shawl. You can definitely mess with the gauge and mess with the weight of yarn you want to use. Um, but then you'll just get a different, a different size finished. Mm -hmm. But I love the size. I think it's a fantastic size. I've worn it just like over my shoulders. I wear it like kind of like a cowl tied in the front or not, you know, draped in the front. Um, you know, you can like Deborah's doing where it's kind of sideways on her. It's so fun. Anyway, so that, yeah, that's coming up next week. That's so exciting. It is exciting. I love it. Wait, and I'm going to just wear it. That's okay. It looks really pretty on you. But forever. Oh. <laughs> Why knit my own when I could <laughs> When you could just steal mine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, so this last week I um, released, we could say released, two patterns. They're for felt ornaments. Uh, I did a little tutorial last week with my youngest daughter. She really wanted to participate and she She's had so a lot of fun. We did a little gnome. I showed, showed these last time gnome ornaments and we had a little video on YouTube that showed you how to do it and there's a pattern on our website and then I finished the rest of my heart and 
Emily said that she wanted to make some. Are you going to actually make some? I am. Some? I am. I am. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna you. Get the, I made the pattern. <laughs> I appreciate that. I'm going to go get the felt today, actually. So the pattern for both of these on the website, and they are free, and it just uses scraps of things. You can use scraps of yarn and scraps of felt and... I mean, whatever. I don't think I have any sequins, though. I need. You don't to buy even have sequins. to have sequins on but there. I want you could, to. You could put rhinestones or beads or circles of felt on there, but in my opinion, everything needs more sparkle. I can't think of a time when you could go wrong with it if it's for me. Honestly. That's true. Yeah. Your burritos shouldn't have sparkle. Depends on what the sparkle's made of. If it's okay. tasty. Okay. <laughs> We need tacos. tacos. We always need tacos. What was the sign that I said today? My Oh, oh three man. ways to my heart. One, make me tacos. Two, bring buy me, me tacos. Buy me tacos. Three, be a taco. <laughs> <laughs> that was on letter full full on Instagram, I think that's what it was today. <laughs> which was great. That's fantastic. So my creation is slightly less time consuming than your creation. Yours is creation. gorgeous. I you love it. You know what you could do? You could make a little pin. You could totally make him into a brooch. I don't know. I love okay. it. That's so fun. <laughs> that is so fun. Okay, it is time for our top five, not three today, okay. because there's no possible way of narrowing no. it down. There's just no, no Putting possible Putting it in way. top five is already really hard. Top five Christmas movies. Everybody has <sighs> them. Everybody has their favorites. We could put least favorite list, but I like favorite list because yeah, there's all sorts of least. terrible ones. There really are. Although I've been watching some of those really cheesy like Hallmark, Hallmark movies and there's having a such a good great. time. Great. So I'm going to give They're just cheesy, a little but... plug for really super cheesy but the 12 dates of christmas 12 dates of christmas okay. that's pretty cute all right so we're gonna start on okay. the bottom and work our way up we're gonna have to do it kind of quickly because we've got five each okay. so emily number five number five isn't really a christmas movie but i always watch it at christmas time and it's the only one of these that i've watched so far this year because i'm saving up the other four and that's an Affair to Remember with Cary Grant and Deborah Carr and oh I love it it's so over the top and I have to fast forward where the little kids are singing because what uh, <laughs> they're not cute they're not good it's just painful but the rest of the movie love it have to watch it every year <laughs> okay what that's just why it makes me think of on our Number one yes, movie. I know. There's one part we always fast forward. Lately we like, haven't been, but, but yeah. Okay. Okay, my number five would be the classic claymation Rudolph. Okay. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. I was so entranced growing up with all of the claymation, any of the claymation, but Rudolph was at the top of that list. And to have it be a Christmas movie, and I've even sewn a Rudolph Christmas bag. Like, yeah. I just, I love the claymation, and that one was fun, and the music on it is fun. It's cheesy, but I love it. It is really cheesy, but All it right. is fun. Okay. Day four. My number four is Elf. I love Elf. I love everything about it. It's so fun. And that's actually one where I one time was having a really hard time. It wasn't anywhere near Christmas and actually watched that one just because you can't help but be in a yeah. good mood. Yeah. So, and we quote things from that movie all the Constantly. time. Constantly. That's actually my number four. Also. That's your number four. Well. We're going to be pretty close to the, the same. Our, we have a lot of the same ones. I yeah. have a lot of things that I think are really fun that I want to watch each year, but like there are movies you can't miss. These yeah. are you can't miss each year. Yep. And Elf, oh, when he's going up the escalator. <laughs> <laughs> when he's running around the, the uh, revolving door and he stops and he throws up. The world's best so cup of like, coffee. Well done. Good you did it. it. <laughs> wow, oh these toilets God. are <laughs> ginormous. Have you seen them? <laughs> oh, oh, my favorite is the Jack in the Box. Oh, we're <laughs> That's the best. You're okay. not a cotton-headed ninny nugget. <gasps> <laughs> okay. Everybody loves it. Everybody loves it. So good. There was so who good. Who did I meet recently that hadn't seen Elf? And I just thought, what a travesty. Well, here's the thing. There are only two movies with Will Ferrell that are worth watching, in my opinion. What's the other one? Stranger Than Fiction. 
which I still haven't seen. That one's fantastic. And then Elf, like, in my opinion. Those are the only two worth watching with Will Ferrell. <laughs> Anything else, I'm like, eh. Okay. <laughs> anyway. Okay, your number three. My number three is White Christmas. Oh, I love White Christmas. I love it. It's, it's again, I mean, you know what? Cheesy doesn't matter. I was going to say, these yeah. are all cheesy. Who cares? Cheesy yeah. is great. Especially or at Christmas time. a line from the movie The Holiday. I'm looking for corny in my life. Oh, yeah. See? I'm looking for that. And um, my daughter, Aria, has this daydream that someday she, in fact, I don't doubt that she'll actually do it. She's going to make one of those red velvet dresses with the white fur trim and oh, the muff. Yep. And that's what she's going to wear for Halloween every year because oh. <laughs> she likes to dress up for Christmassy things for Halloween. But, um, yeah, I love all the dumb dance numbers and the over-the-top drama and the yeah. music and I just oh it's good good stuff which one was first Holiday Inn or White Christmas Holiday Inn I believe was first at least it's black and white I think that that's the, the one that Irving Berlin wrote this song White, white Christmas, Christmas for. for but then White Christmas was so popular it's still the number one most like best-selling song of all time really yeah, it is and um and so then they wrote the movie White Christmas for that song. Okay. Does that make sense? That's why they made it a bigger deal because in, in yeah. Holiday Inn it was kind of just... Kind of a thing that's yeah. on the side there. Right. Yeah. But... Yeah. Uh -huh. So I love it though. And I love all the music. And Aria, or, yeah, Aria and I love to sing Sisters. Although really you sisters, and I should learn. We do that all the time. Sisters. sisters. <laughs> there were never such devoted sisters. Okay. okay. Love it. My number three is Mr. Kruger's Christmas. Oh, that's a good one. It is a short, I think it's 20, maybe 30 minutes long. It's about this old man who is lives alone in the basement of an apartment. He he is the maintenance guy. Maintenance man for mm -hmm. that. And and he has all these great imagination, you know, all these fantasies about himself. Mm -hmm interacting with all these people because he's very lonely at Christmas time and it's Jimmy Stewart. Jimmy and it's Stewart. one of the last things he ever did. Yep and it's just really short. It's one that I think you can find on LDS.org. It's on YouTube. You can find it on YouTube like legally there on yeah, YouTube yeah. to watch for free. Um, and it's Kruger K-R-E-U-G-E-R-S I believe. Yeah Mr. Kruger's Christmas. Yeah, I love that one. It's fun too because there's a whole part with the Mormon Tabernacle Choir, which, and um, such good also music. with the BYU dancer dancing team. Yeah, from They're, the eighties, I think. It's very eighties. Yeah, <laughs> but it's fun. It's fun, and that's one that I always watch when I need to be in the Christmas spirit. Oh yes. Like if I'm having a bad time, that will always make me feel better. Yeah, so. <laughs> that's definitely one of ours. It's on our much watch, must watch list every. December. Okay, two. Number two. We have the same number two Are you ready? and number one. Here we go. Okay. It's, it's a, a wonderful, wonderful life. life. It's so good. How can you not love this movie? Oh, yes. Same thing. Two Jimmy Stewart's right in a row there. Yep. Yeah. Because it's so good. And the theater near us at Jordan Landing, uh -huh. they're having a showing there of It's Wonderful Life. Ooh. I want to go see that. I need to, I was just thinking that today. I need to look up when that's going to be because they're only doing it once, I think. Ugh. So I want to go see Such a good it. movie. Just a classic. Yeah. And again, another one that'll make you always just so happy. Every year I cry when I watch that movie. I cry when I watch pretty much all Christmas movies, even the dumb ones. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true, actually. <laughs> okay, and our number one, and we mentioned this in the past... We'll mention it again in the future. Because it is the best, and it is Scrooge, Scrooge with Albert Finney. It's a musical. Yes. It is from 1979. Oh, really? Is it that? I thought it was older than that, but... 78. I thought it... It could very I could be, be wrong, but it was in the 70s. Oh. It is so good. It's oh, so, so the good. message. They did such a good job... It's actually probably, in my opinion, 
It has the most word for word from the actual book A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. It's not word for word, but it's got more that is. Mm -hmm. And there's a couple little scenes that are in the book that are not. I mean, that's pretty typical for a movie. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's so, it's just so good. That's one I always cry at. Every We're time. talking about what we cry. I don't cry on every of every Christmas movie, you know, you know, but that one always. And my whole family. 1970. Okay, I want to know how many movies from the 70s do your kids beg to sit down and watch with you? <laughs> uh, how many movies from the 70s do I watch? <laughs> exactly. But that one, every oh, year. Every year. Like, oh, Mom, when are we going to watch it? When are we going to yeah. watch it? It is so good. And we watched it growing up, and I got kind of burned <laughs> out on the experience a bit when I was younger, and now... I never did. I don't. Although, the version that we watched was one my dad had recorded on VHS from TV, and it would have this little, like, chi like this bell that's part of the movie right when it was going to go to commercial, and my dad had gone to all this work to, like, pause it right then so that it would so cut out have the commercials. commercials. But I still hear that. Whenever but we watch then, it, I know exactly <laughs> when. I'm like, commercial! Anyway. <laughs> and not just that, but it cut out one of the scenes. Yeah, it did. One of the scenes. Uh -huh. um, At the end after Christmas, yeah. the ghost of Christmas future. Yeah. <laughs> it's so good. Fantastic yeah. music. And even the song from Tiny Tim, I remember thinking that song was the longest I thought it was like 10 minutes thing long. ever. It's we like watched two it. Minutes. It's like not even that. I mean, it's so short. Yeah. And but, so finally I was like, oh, we can actually just watch this song. <laughs> not the ones from An Affair to Remember. You have to skip those. But the one in Scrooge, you can handle. That's what, after you watch it once or twice, that's, that's when it's popcorn break time for us. <laughs> there you go. go get more popcorn. For us... I remember one time, it was probably only one time, but in my head it happened all the time. We had pudding parfaits. Uh -huh. um, you know, like custard parfaits. One time when we watched Scrooge. And ever since then, that's like a thing that you have to do. So we do that every year when we watch that movie. All right, so hopefully you go and watch that one. It's so good. So it's comment so below good. with your favorite Christmas movie. And if you put... A Christmas story, I'll love you still. I'll love you anyway. The National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, which I find hilarious, but it's very short when I watch it because I have to cut out half of it. But <laughs> And I have never seen it. But I quote from it constantly. That I have never seen that movie. <laughs> well. I don't feel the lack in my okay, life. Okay, I have to tell you on Thanksgiving. Okay. Emily, you haven't seen it, so you don't know. Okay. But in a National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, there's a time where they go to cut the turkey. And it's beautiful. Oh it's just gorgeous. It's golden brown. It's beautiful. And he slices into it and it like and shrivels up into this dried mess. And they're like gnawing on it like jerky. And so on Thanksgiving, I did the turkey. And it was bigger. It was we the biggest one on that I the biggest one that I've cooked yet. And I went to get it out Christmas well the day before. Thanks the day before Thanksgiving to make sure everything was good because I had it in the fridge. Uh, to thaw and it was completely frozen. That is the worst. Still. I mean, I had had it in the fridge for a week and it was still completely frozen. So I had to do the emergency thawing method where you put it in the sink of, of um, room temperature water and you have to change it out often. And anyways, so I defrosted it, put it in the fridge um, so that the next morning I could cook it and I get it out and it had refrozen. I have an outside fridge and it was so cold that it froze again overnight. So I was panicked, like, what am I going to do? I don't have enough time. I gave myself one extra hour from the time people were coming till the time I got up at six in the morning to have that beast done. So I thought, well, hopefully that hour is going to be enough. So I checked the turkey when I had an hour left, praying that it would be close enough, like, oh, please be done. And I opened it up. And I saw this beautiful golden brown and this steam as it's coming out made the turkey go <laughs> fall apart. And I'm like, like, Although it no. didn't deflate. It just like it was just, so tender. It was right? so, it had well, it was a little overdone. I'm mm. gonna say it was a little dry. It wasn't bad. It just was a little too much. So okay. it was together, it was beautiful. I lifted up, it was like, oh good, and then the smoke or the smoke, the steam escaped right then. And it just did the same kind of thing. And I screamed. I went, no! I said, Jason, the turkey's done! And I'm screaming. My husband comes running. I'm like, the 
turkey. Because that's what I picture. It has people gnawing on this jerky, leather or uh, turkey jerky, and like dipping it in their water, is trying to like trying to rehydrate. But it was a fine, luckily. Aria did our turkey this year, and she did a fantastic job. I didn't do it. She gave it a massage. She took it to the spa. She, she gave it a massage, a butter massage. <laughs> she put it in the sauna for a long time. I want a massage in sauna, but not a butter massage. Not a butter massage. <laughs> Makes the turkey taste. Ooh, butter massage. Oh, yuck. I knew that would creep you up. Yes, it did. Okay. Oh, okay, my gosh. Well, it is time. Time for us to move on. Yeah. So. I need to figure out Ukrainian shipping today. Good luck. <sighs> yeah, I will get it figured out. Okay. <laughs> Pray for me, everybody. <laughs> All right. Hopefully we'll see you again before yes. Christmas. That'd be great. Okay, see hey. ya. Bye. Bye.